All right, let's uh, get reaction now to this unprecedented move and we speak to Chris Oxtoby. He is the researcher at the Democratic Governance and Rights Unit. This is at the University of Cape Town. Chris, good evening to you and thank you for your time. Let's begin with the significance of this moment in South Africa's Democratic Parliament. It's, it's extraordinarily significant. There has, um, <clears throat> as you've mentioned, never before been a case where a judge has been, uh, been removed from office in South Africa. The closest equivalent uh, one has, uh, one would have to go all the way back to the days of the old South African Republican Paul Kruger, who removed uh, Chief Justice of, of the old <laughs> ZAR. So this has never happened in, um, in South Africa as we know it. Um, I think it's a moment, it, it's, uh, it's in, a, in a sense a sad moment that, um, that, that a judge has had to be removed uh, from office. It's something that doesn't uh, reflect well on our judiciary. But at the same time, it is extremely um, important uh, for ensuring that uh, the judges are held accountable when they uh, commit uh, acts of misconduct, yeah. um, to know that this process, um, and it's taken a very long time to get here, but to know that the process does finally um, exert accountability over them. Yeah, and I wanted to ask this question last, Chris, but now that you've prompted it, uh, you speak about a sad moment, and I'm not sure how good you are at reading body language and I'm going to make a very recent uh, comparison there was the vote to impeach again for the first time in a democratic parliament uh, a, a head of a chapter 9 institution uh, and you could tell particularly from the ANC benches that there was a sense of zeal whilst doing this because I don't know whether they felt a sense of betrayal. Whereas this time around, when I read their body language, their faces, as they were saying yes, mm -hmm. there, there was somberness that I could read mm -hmm. just from their facial expressions. Do you mm -hmm. think that, that, that there's something to be said there? I think so. I mean, I think there should be a degree of somberness about this. You know, removing a judge from office is not something one should uh, lightly enter into. It's not something that should be done easily. Judicial independence is obviously very uh, carefully protected under our constitution, and, and it should be done. So I think if there is a somberness about it, that it's, it's appropriately so that, uh, that, that uh, members of the National Assembly are not uh, gung-ho about that. Um, but at the same time, I think it is encouraging that uh, certainly from the, uh, the speeches that, that I heard, there does seem to be a keen appreciation um, of the issues that were at stake and of the importance um, of making sure, um, as I said, that this, this accountability uh, was exerted. Um, but I think, I think it is a moment that calls for reflection, it calls for um, uh, thinking about uh, or, you know what might have what might have gone wrong was it something that went wrong in the appointment process was it something that uh, that was uh, just just unavoidable and unfortunate that it that it turned out this way but um, I, I, I do think it's um, it's it's a moment that uh, that we hope uh, we won't be revisiting again too often in the future obviously there's there's the the vote still on Judge Matata to come this evening. Um, but it's uh, it's hopefully not something that we're going to have to face uh, face often because it is a it is a very exceptional uh, situation. This is someone who has been described as a brilliant legal mind. Mm. Some people mm. saying that his judgments mm. will stand the test of time in South Africa's uh, jurisprudence. What becomes of him now, Judge John mm. Schopper? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I don't, um, I, I don't know that uh, we we have any definite indication of, of of what will will happen to him next. I mean, clearly his uh, his career as a as a judge will now come to an end. Uh, whether he tries to find um, some sort of future career in um, uh, is still in the law. Uh, he was an academic before he went into the judiciary. It's possible that he might try and move back into academia. But then it's well known that he um, he's a, uh, has a, a, a well-established uh, farm. Maybe he's going to going to retreat into a more a more private life, or maybe he's going to do something uh, completely different that we we can't foresee at the moment. 
Um, of course, he does have a, a legal challenge pending before the constitutional court to this whole process, so it may be that one has to just wait and see what the outcome of that process will be. But um, I, I personally would uh, would be surprised if the court does anything to uh, upset the process that's happened today. Um, so uh, this this is um, almost certainly the uh, the end of of his uh, judicial career. Well, if it's not going to upset the process of what took place in Parliament today, this is the his legal challenge at the Constitutional Court. What does that make it then, that exercise? A simple, uh, mm. what, what do they say? That there's, a, there's a term that uh, legal people use that it becomes just a, almost a, uh, a textbook exercise, is it? Mm. Uh, well, I, look, I think the, the court will still have to determine whether his arguments have merit. I mean, technically, if the constitutional court agreed with uh, with his arguments, then the whole process today could be could be set aside. And what happens after that would depend on the exact nature of what the constitutional court found. I, I think it's more likely that the court will um, will turn down his challenge. It'll either simply refuse to grant leave to to hear the case at all, or it will will hear it but then then reject it. And in that case, then the national assembly vote today stands, and the president will then, in due course, uh, formally um, uh, take the necessary steps to have him uh, officially removed uh, from office. Well, let's conclude on that very point because. Uh, we are saying in our intro that uh, he is possibly going to become the first judge to be impeached. And so Parliament has voted in favour of that impeachment. But the process is not yet, in, yet concluded because it's got to go to the president's desk. What does he do? Is it a mere rubber stamp? Can he do anything to reverse what Parliament has done today? It, it is, excuse me, it is a mere rubber stamp at this point. The, the Constitution expressly provides that the President does not have a discretion. Uh, he must act on the resolution that the National Assembly provides. So this is simply a formal head of state act uh, to, remove, uh, to remove the judge from office. So as I say, the, the only potential uh, lifeline for Judge Schlopi at this point would be if the Constitutional Court upholds his, his legal challenge. Now, we'll have to see what happens with that. I personally tend to think that it's, it's unlikely, but, uh, but that, is, that is a theoretical possibility at this point. But if that court challenge fails, then no, the President's, the President's Act is a, is a mere formality and, and he will then be formally removed from office. Chris Oxtoby, let me thank you very much for your time, a researcher at the Democratic Governance and Rights Unit within the University of Cape Town.